and even change it during that actual class time. Schedule X has helped students with standard mastery because we can assign specific standards to each individual student to differentiate it as well. When we got our test scores back at the end of the year, we're really excited about our growth that we had uh, within our school district. Scholastic has totally redone <laughs> everything for us. I mean, it just has made it so easy. Adelastic improves learning and instruction with its standards-based questions, automatic grading, and instant insight to reports. Educators can easily insert multimedia to make assessments more engaging. Educators have access to over 3,000 Adelastic verified assessments, 38,000 standards type questions, and over 30 question types. Adelastic integrates with a variety of platforms. Edelastic is free for every for teachers and affordable for schools and districts. There are so many features inside Edelastic that make this just such a phenomenal tool. Being able to share Edelastic with other educators is an amazing thing because they look at it and they say, this is exactly the tool I'm looking for. I believe in Edelastic. I believe Edelastic is a tool that can be used to make a significant difference for kids across the state and really across the nation. Sign up for your free Edelastic <coughs> account today. So once again, the best thing about Edelastic is free. So it's another tool that we can use. Uh, it has different standards, state standards that you can assess. So we're going to get into that right now. Once again, if you are at education, edelastic.com, I have to go back to all right, so I'll train in the agenda today. We're going to set up a teacher account. We're going to create a class and add students, create a test assignment, navigate the library, assign an assessment, and monitor progress. It sounds like a lot, but at the end, I have a curated uh, site for you to go to. Everything we cover today, you should be able to go to and uh, use that site. Along with the packet we have with the handout, everything is there uh, to follow along with what we do today. So edelastic.com. Uh, you should be here. Uh, teachers, you can join for free if you have not at this time. You can all in for free. And just follow the directions there. You can sign with Google, because most of us use Google, and Google is going to be helpful if you have Google Classroom, mm -hmm. because it's going to be e easier to sync uh, your students in with Google. And that's what I did, I synced with Google Classroom. Okay. Yes, and I did too. Mm Sign in. Is everybody signed in? First of all, Mr. Harris, you got any problems signing? Mm -hmm. Is everybody good? So. When you got in, did you see a site where you can manage class? Mm -hmm. All right, so if you hit manage class, you can create a class or you can sync, with, sync your classes with Google, right? So if you have a Google Classroom, how about sync with Google? And when you sync with Google, you should be able to see your classes. So this is mine. Mine's already been synced. But the way we have it set up at the elementary school, I have three different blocks. Uh, in those three different blocks, I have challenge students, I have EIP students, and I have the regular students. 
So I pretty much have three different classes in one block. So I had to put all those students in. So in essence, I have nine different Google classrooms for those individual students. All right. So once you've done that, they should assign you a class code. Uh, you should have put in your uh, subject area, whether it's social studies, math, language arts, or reading, or science. And you can do multiple if you didn't do it at the start. At the, at the end, you can create multiple classes. So far, so good? So we have created a class. Here you have these tiles. Where you can create a test or an assignment. So I just say create a test. And from here, you can go to, y'all do y'all see, uh, y'all have a list of tiles y'all can choose from? All right, so there you can do it in two different ways, three different ways. If you want to assign a new test, you can create one from scratch. So, you can create from scratch. Uh, you can use a PDF if you already have one uploaded. Uh, you can use Smart Build. Um, when I try to create one from scratch, I had a Socrative and I tried to copy it and paste into a, it didn't work well because it, it showed me the, the website. It showed the answers to the question, but it also showed the <laughs> website also. Oh. So that didn't work well. But uh, you can always choose from one of the tiles. Uh, this one is electricity practice. So if I wanted to assign to my students, all I have to do is hit assign. Yes, ma'am. Oh, this is mine. This is my personal site. I, I know, but like, um, I didn't like it enough, and like another things where you can personalize the. Oh, did you sign it for? So we created and added students so far, correct? Because you see, if you sync that with Google, your students automatically uh, get the lesson. When you when you assign a lesson uh, in Google, your students just have to go to Google Classroom, and that assignment will be there. When you once you sync it with Google. Uh, an assignment, an assessment. Uh, we can do that 
there's an uh, existing assessment and test library, or you can, like I said, you can create your own. You can go in there and manually input a test. So if you have one that you've been creating for a while, or you can share one from another uh, teammate. So uh, Ms. McKinley was working, Lango Council or math? Yeah. She's working with math, and she wants to share with another math teacher. All she has to do is label that as math, Grade six, right, operations, numbers, and the other math teachers, once they get there, they can see uh, Ms. McKinney's math assignment. So here's a video on creating as an assessment. In Angelina, if you receive from our group loan assessments or just creating assessments using a PDF, our item page, and offering that as yourself, be free signing that assessment. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to working with little boards. Simply nav into the item that set your filter or search or tag. Choose the item you and wish to turn I think this is where you were at. And try using the collections field to search for Edulastic Certified. Edulastic Certified consists of items created from content writers, Newfoundland State Department of Education, and websites like Illustrative Mathematics or Engage New York. Be sure to preview the questions prior to adding them to your test to ensure they match your expectations. You can also choose to create questions from scratch and you'll find a good success question type here. On a question type, enter in or copy a fake question set and then enter the answer choices and the correct answer. When you enter in your question, you'll notice a text editor box will pop up. Here, you can format, add any videos, match formulas, images, or even add a link. Once you complete that, preview it as student, record the metadata, and add in your skills, depth of knowledge, difficulty level, and a topic tag to make this easier for colleagues and other Edgelastic users to find your content. Now that I've added some questions to my test, I have to click on the finishing touches. I'll click on the new test button at the top right and give my assessment a name. I'll give it a description. And my grades and subjects are already populated based on the questions that I chose. I can add a tag if I wish, and this will make it easier for my colleagues to find my assessment based on the topic rather than searching by a particular standard. Next, you could choose to add more items to your test or skip straight to the review screen. In the review screen, you'll have the opportunity to change the orders of your questions and to remove questions as needed. You can check the assessment for accuracy by clicking on expand rows to see the entire question and what the correct answers are. Collapse rows again to give you a condensed view at the questions on your assessment gives you a student a try to check the test and make sure it meets your expectations. You can even change the image in the top right corner as needed. The next tab is called Settings. This is where the premium users will select their extra option for how this assessment is going to be seen by students. Some of these options include shuffling questions, shuffling answers, adding calculators, and even adding passwords. When you're selecting these options for your assessment, you might want to keep in mind the type of assessment that you are assigning. If it's a final exam or a chapter test, you might want to keep the answers and the scores hidden until you're ready to release them. On the other hand, if it's a homework assessment, immediate feedback might be valuable as well as using a calculator. At the bottom here, you're able to change the performance band and standards-based grading scale as needed. This information is generally set up by the district ahead of time and they will allow you to change the bands as needed. Scrolling back up to the top here, you also have advanced options. In these advanced options, you'll see student player skins that will allow you to change the way the assessment looks. This is where you can choose to have the visual of your own state test. In accessibility, you'll have the option to choose to add a magnifier for students and to add a trash bag. When your assessment is ready, you can publish the assessment by clicking the publish icon here. Once you publish the assessment, you have the option to share it, 
whether you're sharing it with everyone, just your district, the school, or if you wanted to share it with individuals. Once you've chosen who to share it with, simply click the Assign button to begin the assigning process. Find our free book content, navigate to the test library. Similar to the item bank, select the filters you need and use selections or tags as needed. You can preview the test or assign it right in the assessment form. You can also choose more if you wish to clone the assessment to modify it for students with accommodations, to delete it if it's your own assessment, or to view the details of that assessment, including the questions and that review screen that we looked at previously when creating our test. For more information about modifying assessments or using SNAP groups, please find the links in the description below. Now that you have your first assessment, the next tutorial will walk you through the options you have for assigning that assessment. Okay, I appreciate that video because when you have a top here and let's say I selected this one is electricity, I can clone it. And like I said, I have three blocks. My third block is my lower block with my space here. So if I want to clone that, after I previewed it, I know it's 10 questions. I might drop it down to five questions. All right, so then I can add and change up. Once I clone it, it's mine. I can change the answer choices or I can make it fit to my special ed and lower level students need. So that's one thing I like about it. Uh, you can preview it. Or you can go straight to assigning it. Like I say, once you assign, you want who you want to assign it to. I have a group of class, so if I want to assign it to my science blocks, like I said, I have nine blocks. <coughs> so I have nine blocks, so I have to assign it to each block. So we, and after I do that, all I have to do is hit assign. Proceed. And once you assign it, they'll ask you if you want to sync it with Google. And if you sync it with Google then, it'll be automatically be in your Google Classroom for your students to use. I know it's a lot of information, that's why I tell you it's, at the end you'll get a curated list, but it's a really good tool once you get it. Um, what I also like is what we get ready to get into is the, well, let's go back to the PowerPoint. So navigate the test library. That's pretty much what we just did. Uh, the tiles that they're showing, uh, if you type in EOG, uh, they have some EOG sample tests that you can use. And once again, you can go in there and modify those EOG tests to fit your students' needs. So if you see, oh, this is too high for my students, I might have to delete that question. And you can put your own question in, but you can just label it EOG. But they have EOG test standards that they can take. Uh, as you can see, they got different standards from the different states, the park, uh, and all different, they still have the old Georgia milestones, uh, what's it called? The other one we just took. Uh, standards of excellence. Yes, the, and before that. Well, I found when I, because I chose that one first, the standards of excellence, uh -huh. and it was showing that there were no um, questions available in that bank, so I just went to Georgia Map, right. and everything shows up okay. there. So do we assign one to a class? Mm -hmm. Let's take time right now. If you have a, an assignment and you want to 
play with it and assign one to the class. Just one, you can go and find an assessment. It could be just 10 questions. Alright, so once your students get it into the classroom, uh, they don't have to do anything. They can just take, hit it and it automatically take them to uh, their assignment. Whether it's 10 questions, 5 questions. Once again, you can preview it first to ensure that it's what you want. It, it is a great tool. Um, everything is there. The reports and the data points are excellent. Once we, that's our next section. So that's great. Especially for us who are progress monitoring yes. for RTI. Anybody have a problem with assigning an assessment? And once again, you can share that with your student. Try it out. I've been trying mine out with my students uh, for the last couple of weeks. Uh, just different assessments, whether it be math, science, social studies, or language arts. Uh, just put it in there and just let them play. And when we get to the data, you're going to see real time data that uh, actually what's happening once they're taking the test. So I just actually assigned that test to my students. So if they get this morning, they'll, because I told them to go to their Google Classroom and follow the direction in the Google Classroom. So if they get that test this morning, you can see that they'll start taking it. And we might see the data pop up as they are doing it on 8.30. Thanks for As you're doing that, I'm just going to continue talking. Uh, monitor progress and explore the live class forward. Uh, that's in module six of your handout. Um, that's just going to give you some real time data. And I know that teachers, we like the data, but it's going to give you, as they're taking that test, it'll show you how they're answering the questions. Uh, it'll show you who's gotten the question wrong. Uh, it'll show you the class dynamics of uh, which question was missed most which one was missed least, and then give you an indication of who you need to work with. So the data is great. Um, let's try to watch the video real quick. Skip answer. The 
the overall score for the class is reflected here on the side. Now the students have taken the test, the teacher can drill down to get response level data by clicking on the bar graph of the questions that we are interested in. The teacher will take you to all of the student answers for that one question. The teacher can scroll down to see each student's response to this one question or click on the initials of the student who just received it. The teacher can also leave comments, score change to score manually here. Up here, you'll notice a drop-down box. This will allow the teacher to shuffle through the next question conveniently. Back on the main screen, you can drill down into an individual student's responses by clicking on the student's name. You can see the student's answers to all of those questions by scrolling down, adding feedback and changing the score as needed, and you can also drill down to find the correctness of the student's responses. <coughs> At the top right, you'll have the ability to use the drop down to move quickly to the next student. The information on the live classroom can be found while the students are clicking the assessment and when they are finished and the assessment is done closed. From the live classroom, teachers can glean quite a bit of real time information. Brand new users will notice you have a spreadsheet. This is the table view of the same data. It's broken down by student, giving each student the overall score here and their responses or scores on each individual question. In the Express Grader, a teacher can modify the scores or add scores as needed. This will also work well if the students are taking the assessment on paper and you need to manually add the data instead of the last one. To change their answer or score, simply click on the box needed. From here, choose edit response and then change their answer as needed. Also, you can change the score right here. When you're done, try using the arrow keys to move to the next question or the next student and then exit exit when you're done. Finally, the report card option generates a quick grading file with a summary for each student to take home. Teachers can select from several categories of information to include on the report. It would be good for preparing that. We have C4 night tonight, so showing that then would be Again, I know we are crunched for a little bit of time. But if you click this icon right here, you're going to see all your reports. <clears throat> and as you play with it, it's going to give you the reports that just say performance over time, uh, peer progress, student progress individually, standards by master reports, um, standard performance summary. Degraded, the standard progress, and performance by, if you have rubrics. But let's click on one. All right, so this is, of course, one of my other blocks. But as you can see, they. Overall average score was 49%. Uh, total sum was 70 questions uh, a piece, but well, 70 individuals. So it breaks it down, uh, the dates, and it breaks it down by student summary subgroup. Uh, All right, so these are my blocks that we have. As you can see, my local, the lower block, they did what they're supposed to do. They scored lower. But as you can see, some of the higher group, they scored, you can see by different blocks. So I know which block I need to work with. So now I can go back and even click on the second block. Uh, add in subtracting fractions. So that was just something I gave them because I don't teach math, but I just wanted to see how it worked. And it was that same block that still having difficulty. Now I can go to the math teacher though and say, um, I know you were having a problem with demand and subtracting fractions, and we can pinpoint those students that still uh, have an issue. So you're probably not going to see any data yet because you haven't given a test or miss, have you? You have? So you can see your data and how it's broken down. Okay, so once you uh, provided, uh, administer the test to your students, 
like I say, it's going to pop up real time. You can see everything they're doing. Uh, you can see once they're done, you can see how pretty much how fast they're moving because you can see as they're answering the question, it's going to move up and down. You're getting it right or you're getting it wrong or it's leveling out. And it's going to do it for each individual uh, student. So this is a quick overview. Once you assign an assignment, like I say, this is all my assignments that I've just assigned. And they are, some of them are taking that test right now. I don't know how, but. <laughs> but uh, those are your, those are your ones that are. Yeah, that's that, they, they are. But um, you can see all the assignments that are assigned. They'll tell you if it's in progress, they'll tell you when it's done. Uh, then you can click on it, and here you can see what they missed by questions. Uh, you can click on individual students and see their performance, the questions they missed. Like I said, this is a good way to, when you have a parent conference uh, and you have enough data point, like Ms. Dr. Uh, Brunson, you said that you still do progress monitoring, actually for progress monitoring. Um, any questions so far? It looks, it looks like it's everything you always needed. <laughs> I mean, it, it is good, but it's it still has its up and down, just like any other program. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's free, so it's something that you can play with. Uh, it's free for teachers, but of course, if you want to move up to the premium, you'd have to pay another hundred dollars a year or something like that. And the district, I guess, you have to negotiate your <laughs> price. I don't, I don't know how that works. But they don't give a price for the district in the set. And it's cheaper than um, uh, form of form of yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really good because everything is there. You can create your own, and some of those performance matters <laughs> tests that you already have, you can transfer it over there before you can get rid of form of that. So you can use this to build up your library or your test assessment. I have um, a question yes. Officer Sumner. I saw it said anti cheating. Have you used that option for the test or know what that is? I haven't okay. used that one. But I, I think it's just uh randomly question order. Okay. They they don't have it in the same so order. So it's, yes, so it's scrambled okay. up. Okay. So you know when right. rubber neck is stop, yeah. Um oh. yes, oh. does it have a real loud feature on it? Um, it has talk to text. I noticed that. It does. For long words. And mm -hmm. our students, they still know how to use it because they can use that reader on the. Yes, mm -hmm. they still can use that because some of them have been using that. Good question. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time that I got to get back to, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a survey that I think uh, uh, Dr. McGann was turning out. Uh, just to let me know what can I do to improve uh, this elastic performance development. This is my first one, so it's going to get better. <laughs> As I work with y'all forward, I worked perfect last night. <laughs> just so you know, that word, it, it, it's not always, not just you. Oh, it's, 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 it's good. Um, once you take that survey, if you have any questions, like I said, this handout have everything that we just covered. And that curated, at the end, I have put in the curated uh, websites, everything that we cover plus more. So that way you can look in if you have problems navigating through Edge Elastic, uh, it'll be there for you. Just play with it, just like anything else. I know it's late in the year and you might not want to do it, but EOG is coming up. See what EOG uh, test that they have and something that you can practice or you can create your own. Remember, you can share it with your teammates, so if you're doing math, share it with your math. Uh, share with science or share with language arts. And it can be beneficial. Dr. Tony, did you finally get in? No, no. I'm gonna have to come back and work with you one on one. <laughs> I know. Huh? I'm checking to see if this is it Simbaloo or Zillaboo or Oh, I might have did I say the right one? Is it two that you said? I just wondered. Oh, yes. It's the one that says survey. 
<laughs> well, okay. Mine says tracking student data. You don't see one that says survey before? It's, it's well, it's a, a oh, it does say survey. <laughs> But you got to remember. I, I understand. I'm, I'm in your lane now, so. I'm sorry. You know. Okay, we got it. Y'all go back in at 8.30? Yeah. No. Okay. No? We have, I've got a few things I need to share. Well, I appreciate y'all. It's. It's before the one that says <laughs> blue or whatever it is. Now, if you, if you click on that one, you see all your websites that you can use for this training. Well, that, any more questions? Uh, please contact me if you have any problems. They have a, a performance development a certification for Angelastic that I took. It took about two hours, but you know, I got the basic of it now, so I just have to keep practicing. So. Okay, we'll get Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm.